we're a fairly small call today, um, but if we could just start with a round of introductions for the sake of the recording, that would be, that would be helpful, I think. Uh, I'll start. I'm Timothy Hill, Data Standards and Technical Lead with the Open Data Institute, as both of you know. Um, Tom, can you give us your affiliation? Hi, guys. Um, I'm Tom. I'm one of the co-founders at Played. And Nick, who also normally needs no introduction. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nick Evans, uh, Technical Engagement Lead on the Open Active Projects at the ODI. I uh, also have a hat uh, that I wear um, working for IMIN on this call. I'm representing the ODI. Okay, fantastic. And I will just share my screen. But because we are small, um, I, we, do, we do have an agenda, which consists of mostly of talking about difficulty level, which we got off to a roaring start uh, last two weeks ago. Um, which is why I'm puzzled we're short today. Um, but if that does not strike your interest, Tom, um, or you have no further comments to add, then we can move on to uh, a variety of issues attached to the opportunities model. Um, or we can just move on to any other business for to address any concerns you might have as soon as I've shared my screen. Mm -hmm. I would say, yeah, just to suggest sticking to the agenda unless there's anything specific that um, I flag up that might be of direct interest to what we're doing. Um, I guess stick to what you were going to talk about for the purpose of other people that may watch this in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if it's, I kind of, you guys are on a path and I think anything extra has been, we've figured out previous to this, but it'd just be interesting to, to see what the current, current kind of agenda is. Sure thing. Um, I just have to find my presentation here, which has disappeared briefly. Here we go. Um, okay, so are you all seeing the title slide now? Yep. Okay, fantastic. Yep. Yeah, I've got that. Okay, so uh, the, the agenda is, um, first of all, difficulty level. Um, we talked about this a fair bit last time, um, and there were two issues that, that jumped out. Um, the first, uh, and I will just stick this link into the channel. Um, it might be helpful to go to this link just to refresh your memory of, of the discussion. Did you say that, yeah, you'd emailed, you'd emailed EMD, haven't you? Strange EMD, sorry, go on. Yeah. Um, Let's get this in the chat here. Did you get any responses from the survey as well? Not yet. Uh, I did actually, that's another thing we can go over. So I did circulate a survey uh, regarding difficulty level and how people are currently implementing that. Um, interestingly, uh, we didn't get a chance to get that out via Sport England, so we didn't get all the responses we wanted. So we got, I think, seven responses. Still pretty good. Um, what I liked about it was it didn't surface anything that we didn't already know in the most part. Um, so, we, you know, we got some fine-grained detail, but it mostly fit into the overarching discussion on, on issue 82. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to... I'm just going to stop sharing here for a moment so I can send you the link. Okay, so there's uh, issue number 82. Uh, let's see here. So the discussion last time focused um, largely around the need to capture some fairly fine-grained detail. So on, on the top level, there's really only um, possibly three or maybe four categories that seem to be in wide use, and the survey results confirm that. Um, actually, maybe I should, I should send you the link for, for that as well. Um, so it, there's, there's a fairly limited number of classifications that are actually used. Um, they're roughly beginner, intermediate, advanced. And then within beginner, there's a distinction between people who have really never done anything before and therefore need some instruction in the activity um, and people who 
have got a basic knowledge but need to develop their experience. Um, so there's sort of a novice beginner was what I was calling it. Um, unhelpfully, the results of the survey, which I've just sent you a link to in the chat, uh, and which are also linked to on the slide, show that the novice beginner terminology is widely used uh, inconsistently to determine <laughs> to address one or the other of those. Um, Hmm. Well, so novice beginner can mean a beginner that's not a novice and is a novice. Well, okay. So you get you get novice beginner. Um, novice sometimes means somebody who has no experience and therefore needs training before they can become a beginner. Um, I think it's the archery people. Beginner means somebody who's got no training at all and therefore needs some training so that they can become a novice. Oh. So, yeah. So it's it's exactly symmetrical, but. Oh my goodness, yeah, that's so interesting. So we need some third term, I guess, which is an exercise for the thesaurus, I suppose. Um, mm -hmm. Anyways, we should now have all the links that, that uh, are linked to in the, in the agenda. Um, so the, uh, the second one, the, the bit.ly link, is for the results of the survey, um, which I've anonymized a little bit, and then the second one is to a second issue that I've opened up off the first. Right. Um, so if you scroll down through the health commitment statement where which will help us protect the beginner attendees attend expert classes. Sorry, that's, that's interesting. So you're looking at the you're looking at the survey responses now? Well, I was just I was just uh, making the a, a point there. I guess there's this is gravity to this, isn't there? So yeah, this is one thing that's interesting about the um, about the responses we did get regarding difficulty level. As I say, I don't think it surfaced very much that we hadn't thought of already, but what it did indicate is that there's more, yeah, there's more weight attached to it than I would have thought. Um, that there's often insurance implications, and then the person who responded for swimming seems to be just worried about the possibility of somebody drowning, frankly. Um, they're, yeah, they, the, the results of, of somebody not fulfilling the necessary skill level is, is potentially quite serious. So, mm -hmm. yes, they were uh, concerned about that. Um, sorry, I'll just jump back to the GitHub issue. Sorry, I'm going to have to get much better at navigating Zoom, I have to say. Um, uh, Okay, so sorry. So um, looking back at the GitHub difficulty level proposal, um, yeah, so there's a very small number of top level terms. Um, and then there's a very large number of more specific terms. It's a highly branded space. Um, so for swimming lessons for something you might have for children, it'll be, it'll be ducklings, sharks, minnows, jellyfish, whatever. Um, for for martial arts, so it will be different belt bandings and that kind of thing. So you you do need some kind of way of mapping more specific terms um, to to generally speaking the intermediate and advanced levels. Mm -hmm. then there's a bit of a discussion between Lee and I about how exactly you do that. Um, I don't think I, <laughs> the specifics of it aren't that interesting because the answer is basically scoss in both cases. But it's a fairly mm -hmm. interesting just. Uh, discussion of how exactly you do that. Hmm. Nick, you sound like you have a a reflection there. No, I'm 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 just sorry, I'm I'm, I'm just um, quickly re revising my knowledge of the notes from Lee on what he's saying about indexes and uh, the whole question about whether we use numbers at all, which is poignant, but I'll uh, I'll <coughs> sorry, I'm 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 still um yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Um, no, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything you wanted to contribute. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, I guess one, yeah, as Nick alluded, one of the open questions is a suggestion was made further up the thread um, by Peter Dolkins, user, uh, let's see here, do, do, do. Uh, yes, user Dolkins P. Um, about mapping everything onto a unified scale between, I think, zero and 1,000. Um, Lee and I both 
were less keen on that. I think Nick, you'd commented more positively above, um, simply on the grounds that it kind of create it, it invites comparisons that maybe aren't going to stand up to fine grain scrutiny. Mm -hmm. Also, one thing two hundred and something two hundred and one. Uh, the implication is that you've drawn a fairly clear distinction and, and maybe you haven't. And if we're aggregating data, of course, there might be quite varying interpretations possible. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I Actually, I think I kind of agree with that point um, in that respect. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it, it, gets, it could get complicated, right? Yeah, it's got some advantages. Um, but I think Lee points out that actually if we want if we want to add an ordering kind of property, um, then we can we can supply that without maybe mapping everything onto a zero to one thousand. We can we can use SCOS to indicate some kind of ordering without necessarily having everyone aligned to this particular scale. I mean, just to check the use case here, right? The reality of the, an activity finder like the one that Tom will no doubt have built or is going to be building in the future. Um, is that there's going to be a drop down somewhere with a level that you're selecting. Um, and so I guess I'm wondering if, you know, if there's a number of activities available on screen, some of them are jujitsu and some of them are, um, you know, archery. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like what we're, what we're saying is that, that we're just forgoing the ability to put them in one big list, which might be okay. Um, or in fact, are we actually saying, um, because it scores and it's hierarchical that you can pin, you can have parent child relationships. So you can, for example, say that in the experience category, there is, you know, whatever for archery and whatever. For, so you could, I'm just thinking about that, like what that list literally looks like in the user interface is, you know, is there a categorized drop down where it's like beginner, intermediate, advanced, and then it says archery heading and then, you know, whatever. And then, Taekwondo and then the belts um, or something because uh, and you can you can you can advanced includes the belts because it's the parent and um, I, so I guess what we're saying is you're not going to be able to put more than one big list where you're going to have belts interleaved with each other from different sports um, you know because the different belt colors are different right but that doesn't make any sense anyway because why would you want to put yellow belt you know next to yellow belt from another sport like yeah i'm interested in have, yellow belt martial arts yeah <laughs> right it's going to be like a bunch of belt colors in a random list and maybe the maybe the ordering gives us the ability to put those in the right order but you're still going to have like yellow belt karate then taekwondo blue under them each other and uh, i guess what what i'm trying to think if there's any user experience that would ever want to do that um the, the only use case i can think of where having that might be interesting is where you've got like some kind of points or reward system where you're rewarding people for difficulty levels of activity and you're saying this is harder therefore i'm going to give you more of something um in which case it might be useful to have kind of a relative value to that thing because otherwise you're literally just stuck with a bunch of advanced stuff and you don't know um but that that might just be i mean that might just be a crazy hazy you could do that by just mapping everything in scores to a number and maybe you want to do that yourself because it, that number might vary and it could be gamed and you know maybe that maybe it's maybe maybe that relativity isn't important and if it is important you could you could you can map that to scores it's just a bunch of thoughts um from uh, our, my perspective yeah the parent child scenario makes the most sense okay. uh, i couldn't imagine using the second option or for whichever order option it was um in it any case that I could think of um, and can't picture anything else that currently would do that and I don't really see what the benefit would be except for just being as flexible as possible but it depends what that actually means logistically to, to make that work whether it's worth the, the juice is worth the squeeze mm. right yes <laughs> absolutely yeah I, I mean I can the use case that occurs to me is if you wanted to sort of recalibrate what you meant by easy. So if you were creating an application that was for, you know, absolute rank beginners, um, 
you know, and you wanted to create a threefold classification within that, you could say, I'm only dealing with things up to 200, and I'm going to describe everything up to 75 as easy and 76 to 150 as, as intermediate or something. Um, that does seem kind of a, uh, an edge case though. And again, you'd sort of be relying upon the data being quite comparable in that case. And I don't know, even though that numerical range allows you to make that kind of distinction, I don't know whether it's possible at an aggregator level really to uh, rely upon that level of alignment. Um, yeah, I, in regards to the beginner, intermediate uh, and advanced, um, how how is that currently being looked at apart from this solution is it for like being as kind of trying to think about it practically the publisher ticks a box a beginner intermediate advanced and they're therefore in control of what they deem their session to be on that scale or is that yeah. been thought about or has that been discussed or is having it kind of as a, on a point scale, who would who would kind of distinguish what each of those meant across the board? I think that might be complex from my perspective, but maybe I'm not getting the angle of it correct in my head yet. I think it's I think it's tricky. It's tricky no matter what. It's a little bit tricky with the terms that you still have to. You've still got the situation where you have to say, okay, white belt means easy to me. So you have to picture some kind of interface where you can say, you know, some set term provided to me by the data provider maps onto one of these four, three or four top level categories. Um, I, th I guess, yeah, that's only really relevant in martial arts. I can't, I can't picture any other sports where by the name of the activity, it would indicate the ease of the activity, I guess in some in some of the descriptions and, and then the names that the providers give, you could probably whistle it down based on that, but I wouldn't imagine it would be accurate enough to then filter for, from a user to be able to filter that um, and then establish whether it was easy or advanced. Well, I, I guess diving is another good example, right? If you've got a diving session, you need, a, you need an open water paddy cert for, uh, there's an advanced is quite a specific meaning in that respect or whatever it is intermediate means. Beginner means try dive, intermediate means, um, sorry, I just meant martial arts sounds like one, maybe there's others that are, are like that, but you're right, most people will be beginner, intermediate, advanced. Mm, yeah, um, I'm fairly naive in, in both martial arts and diving, so <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I know I, Yeah, I have niche knowledge about both these random things. Um, <laughs> and, the combination is incredible. Um, there's bound to be, yeah, there's bound to be sport. I'm trying to think what fencing has. Um, there's bound to be sports like that where, uh, or equestrian maybe, I feel like that's probably a bit like that. Although you may, yeah, that, probably other nuances in there. Also golf, right? Um, what does advanced golf mean? You've got... No, I play golf, so I can actually um, give oh, a yeah. perspective on this. Okay. Um, there's no golf courses um, which are kind of, um performance based really like you sometimes you have to have a handicap to play um that's pretty common across the board where it's, sometimes it's not sometimes it is but i guess that kind of information which is always going to be bespoke per course is is just where people would include that in the description of the activity i think it's not really a, B, or C, it's either yes or no, whether you can play or not without a handicap. It's not about whether you've got a handicap, you have to be a specific level of golfer to play a specific course. It's just, you have to have this to play on this. And it is rare these days that that actually ever happens. And what about um, tra training sessions for golf? Like wait, if you've you got a coach or if you were joining a session, I don't know how that works. Um, in that instance, they would probably call them um, beginner or intermediate classes mainly with a beginner in that format of a, of a group session to be honest yes yeah, so and you get into one-to-one -one coaches yeah um, mm -hmm. so yeah group sessions are, are usually beginner yeah I mean we do get you do get some vocabulary variations um, like I think British cycling has used uses easygoing 
Well, mm -hmm. yeah, so this is, and this is something that actually the final link that I posted into the chat, um, into 281 or something like that, is my attempt to resolve this to some extent. So village cycling has got two distinct hierarchies of difficulty. One of them it more or less maps onto the three level distinction. It's like easygoing, intermediate, difficult or something. And it's basically gradient is what they're capturing there. Um, but then there's a whole other racing categorization where you have to have participated in a certain number of courses with an assessed difficulty. Um, I'm a little hazy on, on the details of this, but you know, some courses will be quite mountainous or have challenging terrain, so they'll have a rating of 25 or something. And if you've done a number of those, then you can go on to a difficulty 50 race or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And then you've got this kind of progression, which is, it sounds a little bit like the golf handicap thing, um, that you have to have evidence of some kind of performance capacity before you can actually engage in the activity at all. Um, so the, the vocabulary one seems fairly simple that even if British cycling is quite wedded to easy going rather than beginner or something like that, it would be easy enough to see how that mapping would work. Um, but if you go to, um, sorry, issue number 210, can you all see that on my screen? Yeah, that's good. Okay. That's good. I just had a quick, I, had a, I just had a quick read, but it does look great. Yeah, I don't think it takes much to capture this. Um, I mean, because I'm relying on free text mostly. Um, so yeah, this is a prop. This would be a property called prerequisites, um, which would be separate from difficulty. Um, it's kind of capturing a funny variety of stuff. So there's the health commitment statement. Um, Nick, are you more familiar with HCSs than I am? No, I'm afraid not. This was surfaced in one of the survey responses and it was that apparently if you're a leisure operator you have to have this text somewhere on your on your website saying i as a user um i'm not going to overexert myself or act irresponsibly and will be aware of my general condition and while we respect your choices as a, as a leisure provider you know exercise some common sense basically um so we, at the same time that doesn't seem to be legally binding there's no like tick box you have click before you show up um yeah i i'd actually wonder whether we're just thinking about how this would this would be um this would appear in user interface and um, i wonder whether that might be a different type of thing to the other examples you've got around qualifications and uh certifications which kind of are uh you know you need this certificate otherwise don't come whereas the health and safety is just more of a kind of uh you know it's a bit like those silly terms and conditions in software you know, read, read this 50 page document and tick if you want to agree to use Google. You will obviously want to use Google, so you're going to say yes anyway. Um, yeah, so I uh, wonder whether the first one of those examples is just we, we might end up recreating that kind of craft um, where, you know, there's a, there's a prerequisite that doesn't actually mean anything, which is just going to not, not be useful in the interface, potentially. I don't know. I guess really is a question of whether this is how. <laughs> how legally binding this is, which maybe is just going to take some research. I don't know whether it's the case that you have to, you know, if you're a leisure provider, you have to provide a link to this off an enrollment web form or what. Um, so it might be, it might be something, it might be some boilerplate we're obliged to provide. I don't know. Right. I feel like terms and conditions. I guess as I was looking at the crossover in booking, there's terms and conditions, which, yeah. which you have a, a tick box that says, you know, you, you can choose, I think there's a Boolean that says, you know, is this a thing that people need to explicitly assent to, or whatever, or say that they have? Um, so maybe that that's health and the health commitment statement may be more of a terms and conditions, um, and in the booking context. And if they're bouncing off at us anyway to go to a booking flow outside of um, whatever the experience is, then they would probably go through that anyway. Maybe. Okay. Uh, so. So HCS might be yeah out of scope or live somewhere else for for prerequisite yeah maybe I mean I'm only wondering is whether we we keep the prerequisites to kind of more skills and qualifications basically prerequisites the participant needs to have a thing they need to have rather than a uh, a thing they need to get you know um, which they would get anyway or something like because otherwise you could put in things like um, 
you could put in like the questionnaire that you you know your parents need to fill out before the kid attends right. and as gr- i mean which are, which are all great things but i wonder if they're that different type of thing to like i have a qualification i need or i have a need to i need to have done a training course or i need to have, mm-hmm. have already obtained a level of something or a um official something maybe okay so so maybe prerequisites might might be better be termed qualifications then or requirements. Mm-hmm. yeah but but i think you're right it's not just qualifications some of them are yeah certifications and some of them are um uh, yeah um i'm t- trying to think because qualifications is what they use in coaching oh right okay yeah we don't want to cross over into yeah that's a very different domain isn't it yeah yeah you get qualifications if you coach to a certain level and you can there's the whole qualifications database that i think lives inside um a sports suite where you can mm-hmm. okay yeah. associate those things actually yeah. sports suite might be a good one to look at um but you you get qualifications uh so you, you are in in sports suite you go on a course and a level two course to gain the qualification from that course right right and so you you would therefore be looking for courses that can give you the certain qualification um which Mm, slightly, maybe slightly different. I mean, and, mm, is there is there a crossover? I mean, do you want to link those things together? I don't know. If you need to go and get a qualification, you might want to search for courses where you can get that qualification. It's a good point. So, if you need to have an open water diving certificate, do you want to be able to click a link there to say, find me area, look things in my area that can get me the certificate, so I can come back and do this course later? Um, and therefore, you want to be able to. Um, use the same uh, standard link or URL or identifier or whatever it is to reference that qualification so that you can use it both ways. Mm-hmm. Like I'm running the big circle of that thinking, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think my, the main use case I was thinking of when I wrote this, uh, I mean, I was actually mostly thinking of it from a provider point of view of, because there's insurance implications essentially. Um, you need some mechanism to say, yeah, everybody is on who's showing up the facility has got the ability to participate. Um, and then from the user point of view, and I think it's particularly important because Open Active is mostly interested in people who are getting active rather than those who are already highly committed. The, the worrying thing to my mind is if, say, an archery range is publishing loads and loads of opportunities because, of course, they've got, you know, hour-long slots, you know, all through the day. Um, and a beginner user is going to need some kind of flag, like, oh, no, hold on, you, you can't just walk in. You need to have some kind of, you know, training course before you do this. Mm. You know, ideally with a link saying, and here's how you do it. Right? Um, yeah, I think that the, it's basically dependencies, isn't it? Kind of. It's like, how do you, how do you both sides, how do you specify that, that this depends on having something else? And how do you specify that the something else the, the type of activities that the opportunities that give you that something else. Um, and I guess, yeah. Cause so um, in the gym, you have to do an induction course before you can do the, uh, I'm trying to think of this other rowing with rowing clubs. You have to do a learn to row course um, before you can participate in the normal training they have. And learn to row courses are 10 week courses that run, uh, start at a certain time, finish at a certain time. Uh, and, and when you've got learn to row, then you can rock up to the rowing clubs training day. But if you just, if you've never rowed before and you're in the training day, you're just going to get in everyone's way because you're going to be like figuring out how to get in the boat and what, to, you know, yeah. all that stuff. And they don't have time for that. Otherwise you, their, their slots finished by the time you've figured out how to get in your boat. And that's, that annoys the rest of the team. So, uh, yeah, but I guess you want to know that you need a learn to row course to do the training and a learn to row course is the thing that gives you that. So um, it's interesting because there's a common identifier there. Um, I wonder if program, hmm, we, we have the concept of a program, which we previously would call learn to row. Learn to row would be a type of program where you would achieve this qualification or this whatever. Uh, it's maybe not even a qualification. That's the thing because learn to row isn't a certificate. It's just... Same as climbing. If you climb, you need yeah. to have a you know done the introduction course of how you you know belay and all that. It's half an hour. You can get a slot booked in with somebody, and when you've got that in, then you you know 
But again, I don't know if that, is that a qualification? Is it recognized? I think it's just, you just say you've done it and you know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, the climbing, the climbing and the archery both seem to be more or less sort of self-certification. So you show up and say, yeah, I've done this kind of thing. Ideally, you've done it at the same provider. Um, but, yeah. yeah, which is interesting because we're kind of crossing over into the beginner and novice stuff again. So with rugby, you need to come to a beginner session to learn the rules before you can go and crack on with the tri-tag stuff. Um, so I guess the, is this codifying that just to like a, a, a detail more like, well, the, dif the difference between a beginner and advanced, or be sorry, beginner and everything else, as Lee was saying, is beginner is absolute beginner and everything else is you've got that prerequisite. So, uh, I mean, I'm just thinking of different ways you could do this, because one way is you say, oh, there's this complicated dependency structure and you need to have X to do Y, and then for, you know, um, let's codify all the, all the qualifications and standardize the identifiers and then have a situation where there's clear dependencies and then we could, which probably works well for diving, where you've got quite complex qualifications and things that you need to have for each next step. Um, but in the average case, where you've just got a beginner and everyone else, maybe it's easier just to say beginner and everyone else, and then somewhere write what it takes to become not a beginner in that in that activity, uh, which could be free text or it could be, uh, yeah. Um, basically, if you get if you're in an, an advanced class, you can just say. Um, yeah, maybe even a boolean flag do you need to do a beginner course first and then you go to the beginner course um, and you don't need to have all the complex dependencies because every everyone has the notion of like the prerequisite course um, in that activity because so I feel like we, we basically we could we could complicate this by making it really work, work really well for something like diving mm -hmm. or even something like taekwondo if you wanted to get into that you know you can't do this belt until you've done this belt you, know, you, you could write the whole tree out but uh, we would be overcomplicating everything else maybe um uh, all the other very simple qualifications which are just how do i you know use the thing how do i how do i get how do i drive a segue before i get into the competitive segue um is that actually a thing you know, i kind of wish it would be i don't know new business opportunity um yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think, I think that if you look at the attributes I've defined for prerequisites, I mean, it's not that complicated, although I'm now wanting to complicate it. Um, because it's, you know, name, URL, um, name mandatory, uh, URL recommended, so you can find out more about what's actually being demanded of you. Um, and then a free text description, optionally. Um, maybe i'm now thinking maybe it would be nice to have some sort of yeah link to program saying you know and if you want this qualification or this prerequisite here's how you do it um and that would be about it um i think you're right the program link is probably enough isn't it have you seen the example program that we uh where is it uh um, let me dig out a thing and post it to the thing, uh, to the group. There's a, there's a program, there's a, uh, I've lost it from my URL history, but there's a, there's a program somewhere. Um, So then your proposal would be, so there's, there's an attribute that is program link, is that just? Yeah, um, trying to think what the JSON LD way of doing that would be, but yeah, basically linking it back to, because like you say, if programs are the places where you get the qualifications, mm -hmm. then it would kind of make sense to uh, mm, but programs are a type of brand. Yeah, I'd forgotten about this. Uh, okay, so I've, I found that I found a little link. Let me just share it so you can you can put it on. Uh, this is an example um, program which is being um, and 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 program is also really quite broad because we're using it basically for anything. Um, I can't remember what the spec says, but it's basically for anything where. Um, the program is it's like a type of a thing that's run by lots of different organizations. It's like a pre 
uh, pre-existing like type of thing. So it looks like something like triathlon training or? Uh, yeah, or like um, uh, back to netball uh, is a good example. Right, right. So it's like a campaign. It's Yeah, there you go. if you open that up, we'll see the... Um, so that's an example of a um, of a program which is um, back to netball. Um, that if you're using the Open Active, is it, sorry, if you're using Gladstone, you can actually just click a button to import that content in, and the program is then um, baked into the feed. So it'll just pull that content. So every back to netball person can pull this in, and then just um, yeah, that's just. That means that your feed then has program and this content inside it, like brand, fact netball, mm -hmm. all that stuff, logo, image, URL. And we're talking to Les Mills about the same for them. So for, for Les Mills getting all of their, you know, grit and they've got loads of different brands, but they're running those, pro those programs are being run by loads of different uh, sites and centers across different types of providers. So this helps the program a uh, licensor, which is Les Mills, who licensed the program content with all of the kind of kit and everything they need to run it and the graphics and, and the imagery and the brand behind it, they can describe the program like Grit or, or um, and other Les Mills training, I can't remember the branding off. Um, they can put that in and then you, this is then a um, uh, then way of them linking that together. So what I, I kind of wondering is whether program, well, program is quite broad right now because it's literally anything like that. Um, and learn to row is also a type of program, which is accurate in our current kind of thinking about program. Um, but what we're saying here is that sometimes programs are more than that. They're just, they're, they're a prerequisite or they're a... But it also sounds like some prerequisites are not at the scale of a program, that it is if you must do our half hour learn to climb session. Um, yeah. That's not a program as such as just something we've got to do. Um, that's true. That is true. Yeah. So it's not like, it's basically like it, it's the linking between these things. That's the interesting question, I suppose. How do, how do you link between the sessions that you need to do to do the session that you're trying to do? And I guess you, to do that effectively, you'll need to categorize those sessions somehow. And I guess that's where we're back to program again, because there's no other way of categorizing there's no way of, unless we add a new way, unless we add a new type of tag to an opportunity that you can use to say, this is a learn to row session. Well, I mean, yeah, in, hmm. Can we just have a URL field, really? I mean, it wouldn't be called URL because we're using that for further description, but, you know, could you just have some, you know, uh, pre-rec pre URL attribute um, recommended saying, yeah, follow this link and, you know, this is more appropriate to you. Because it, in an actual use case as a user and presumably as a provider, what you really want is for the user to go on, say, oh, I would love to, I'd love to have, have a go at archery. I'll just book myself in a slot. Oh, hold on. Actually, what I need is the intro course, which is available here. Like you essentially want to redirect. Um, well, so the, yeah, so this is the question, right? Are we basically, are we going to allow for people to be able to redirect across multiple, like between different providers to achieve that pre prerequisite? That's the question. Because if the provider is only just redirecting to their own beginner course, that's one level. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just saying, yeah, you just need to do this other thing. Or is the provider saying, you need this type of thing. You can get that in all of these places. Well, we leave that to the we leave that to the provider, I suppose. Um, yeah, I guess maybe maybe. Well, okay. So if if we use program, then for example, as one option, you can specify the idea of a program, which maybe learn to row is one, and that is something that you know gets archery GB or whatever it is. You know, they and Paddy and all these other people can put can create their programs fairly their programs. Um, they just happen to be the types of programs that result in qualifications. Mm -hmm. um, so you can choose to link to that. Um, or as you say, maybe the, um, maybe it's just a URL like you have as a link, uh, which is just some way you can look at more information about 
ways of looking onto that thing. I, I, I suppose the third option would be that you actually link to IDs of opportunities that are specific, but I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, I guess we don't, we don't have any intermediary. It's either like a type of thing, which could be all these things, or it's like a, this specific idea of an opportunity, which is very tangibly this, which then, which then becomes complicated because we're talking about um, maintaining, uh, as soon as we're at opportunity level, we're into like fast changing data that's really like yeah. difficult to keep up with mode. And that's kind of going to be hard for systems to maintain the, pre the you're, you're, we're, we're creating um, li live dependencies between yeah, opportunities. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, I don't know if that's necessarily our problem in a way. Um, I mean, if we made it say a URL array, um, an array of URL values, um, and said, so, I mean, that essentially ensuring that ensuring that those URLs are not are not dead links is the responsibility of, of the data publisher. Really, uh, I don't I don't know how how far we can go down the line of, of uh, forbidding or or encouraging particular values in that in that field. Um, so, what's the type schema.org uh, range of the of that field is it program or is it we don't actually event maybe or course uh that's what i'm trying to figure out like what i would just say one level down and say just say schema.org url um oh i see or a series of urls um, yeah i guess we could do that but the problem with that is that obviously as a data user that becomes really hard to navigate because if you don't know what type of URL that is you can't really render it into anything whereas if you're trying to connect this data like so so I, th I think I think I might be wrong it's maybe a lead question I think the JSON LB way of doing stuff is if you're trying to link to an external website that's not JSON LB, you can use URL, and URL basically means external resource. I don't understand, and, yep. you don't, and no one's going to understand. So just treat it as an opaque blob, mm -hmm. and you can download it or link to it. And if you've got a thing you're trying to link to in Link Data Land, where you're saying this is a thing you can try and figure out what it is, you use the ID uh, field, the identifier, yep. and that has to be typed. And so you you say, you know, ah, oh, this is a program, this is an array of programs, and then therefore this is an ID of type of program, mm -hmm. and you can reliably. Un anticipate that that will link to a program or a opportunity or a session or a course or whatever um, so that um, so yeah so I don't know if I don't know if we can use URL to link to a link data type if you see what I mean we probably have to decide whether we're trying to like is it an opaque reference to something that they can just be referenced and display or is it something that they can reason about intelligently and then drive the user experience off of yeah, I guess I wasn't, I guess in terms of the UI, I wasn't thinking of anything more than, you know, for more information, blue underline. Um, right, yeah. right, right, right. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's not, it's not very satisfying in terms of the, in terms of the intelligence it would support. Yeah, absolutely. Right, right, right. But yeah, I mean, to be fair, if we, if we, if we used program identifiers, that would really easily drive a program filter. Because what you could then do is you could have it in the search, you know, you could just be like, oh, I want to do a try, um, learn to row course first. You click on that. That does, does a filter, program filter on learn to row. All learn to row courses then come up and you can choose that and go to it. And you're, you're straight through to another like useful experience mm -hmm. um, that, that then enables, um, which, which I feels like it fits with what we kind of have. Um, so I suppose the question is, what do you, um, the prerequisite, basically, if you, yeah, if you included a program, you just probably could just add that to the prerequisite in name URL description, you could just add another one that was program, and then you'd have, yeah, a URL for it. Um, no, hang on, that doesn't work. This would have to be a type program, and you would need an ID in there, and then you would choose whether to re-include the program values in that space, including the URL. Mm -hmm. If you look at the example um, I, slack, I um, put on the chat just now, that has a URL in it. Um, and I just think it probably is the same URL as the URL in the example that you had just there. Um, sorry, you said you just put it in the chat? Oh, the one, sorry, the one I had previously put in the chat, the brand.json. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Right. Um, Sorry, you just unshared your screen there. You didn't mean to do that. Yeah, yeah, that was. Oh, that was okay. sure. I need to. I, I can't seem to share the screen and oh. access the chat at the same time. Right. My bad. Sorry. Yeah. Um, is there a more generic class that we can use mm. than program? Good question. Well, this is actually brand, not program. Oh, sorry, right, right. Well, yeah, yeah. Is there, exactly. Is there is there a more um, generic class we can use that covers all of these things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So brand, okay, it's a good point. So brand is used in program um, at the moment. And brand is actually in scheme.org its own thing, unfortunately. There's no parent of brand. That's what that is. No. Okay. <laughs> well, unless we do the multi-list thing that you can do where you can allow more than one value, type of value. So we, we could allow event brand or something else um, in, that, in that list. Uh, or we could create a new type of thing. Um, but you could create this certification or something and then that could be, we, we could create that and then we could use, have a name description URL for that. Uh, yeah. Um, See, so you can choose whether the prerequisite is a certification or uh, or and or um, a program. Is is this just overcomplicating things at this point? I mean, I'm just worried about somebody actually trying to implement this. Um, is this an opportunity that providers would welcome? Do you think, or is this like, oh my god, now I have to. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to think too hard about my half hour cl climbing session. Um, yeah, well, I guess in, in things like the rowing website where learn to row is a really straightforward program, like mm -hmm. that would be pretty straightforward to add all the things that require it would just need this field in linking back to that program and all the things that are it would just need this in it. See what I mean? So it's like much simpler. Mm -hmm. um, for the other one, for the other ones that are more decentralized, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, because it's it, yeah, it seems like there's essentially high risk sports. Understandably, but like a very codified way of doing this. Um, you know, scuba diving. I guess rowing is just uh, an intense activity. Um, but then, yeah, like the sort of archery, climbing wall kind of stuff. It's just it is just a warning that you can't pitch up. Um, and it, yeah, so then then program seems like trying to scaffold yeah a, a training session into a program seems like too much work. It's too heavy. You're totally right. Yeah. So yeah, maybe it, yeah, maybe it's maybe it's both. Like a like an optional either either you can private supply program which is a is a useful link for cases yeah. where. That yeah, makes sense. Or we need. I think we do need both of those things. Yeah, because you're totally right. There's like a there's like a rough and ready like. Um, I don't even know what what, what is that. What it, uh, it's not even a qualification because it's not a you know it's. It is uh, just a prerequisite. Yeah, I, I think that's. Yeah. Yeah, but then but then does this ca this account for things like um. Duh diving yeah okay i see what's happening yeah so so the trouble with the program version of this is that it actually means that you um we end up focusing on the actual course that you need to do beforehand rather than the qualification that you get from the course yeah which is which is maybe a simple way of doing it because you need to worry about like trying to link courses to qualifications and all this kind of stuff in the middle you just say you know you need to do this before you can do that um but it's slightly different to what you were saying about yeah qualifications cool um oh, yeah basically wondering whether we have whether they are actually different things i don't know like for, yeah. well, maybe, because you, you, you could say that you've got like a list of just text and urls like you've got and they're they're things that are the text that says you need to do a level two diving certificate or a half hour climbing session thing. And then there's a program link, which is where you can do one of those things. 
mm-hmm. which is then like a next level of of um, useful information. So, um, which would then mean that what you've got is a qualification inside which, sorry, a prerequisite inside which you've got a type prerequisite with your name and URL, which is the actual qualification itself. And inside there, you've got program, which is your place that you can get that thing. So if you want to supply the extra link data, you can. Um, but if you don't, then you literally just put the text values in. And that opens us up to a, like a list of free text, which can all be hyperlinked to things if they're useful. And so if link data is complicated, but in the case where you've got the ability to go that next level and recommend rowing, um, then we can you can have like a, you can imagine in the user interface, that would then look like, You've got like, here are these two qualifications and next to some of those is a button that says, find this mm-hmm. near you. And you can click that only if the program link's supplied. Um, otherwise, you, you just need to hit Google and figure out how on earth you get a level two whatever qualification. Mm-hmm. And I think that's probably what I was saying we're trying to maybe try to avoid is like someone being like, I'm baffled by this free text. And I don't know what to do with it. Like, I need to now go and Google how to get the thing. Mm-hmm. So then you've lost them from the experience. Yeah. Um, well, we've got three minutes, <laughs> unfortunately. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess I guess my main concern is actually Tom has been sitting here listening to us. Well, I'm assuming he's been listening to us for like 40 minutes now. Um, Sorry, Tom. <laughs> it's, it's like a soothing podcast. I can just. Uh, here in the background, which is quite uh, <laughs> relaxing. So my, my next question is going to be a surprise to you then. I was just wondering if you had any, any thoughts on that as somebody who's closer to implementation. Um, yeah, uh, I tuned out for a little bit on the last <laughs> five, 10 minutes. Um, I could hear it kind of going on in the background, but um, I get it was something to do with the UI of this scenario. Can you just run it past me quickly? <laughs> yeah, so it's, it, it, yeah, it really is just that if there's a prerequisite for something, and that could range from you need to do a half hour course before you try the climbing wall up to you need to finish an 11 week course of swimming or rowing or scuba or whatever before you can do this. Um, yeah, what kind of user experience would you anticipate? Um, you know, how much do you think it's realistic to expect implementers to uh, represent this? Um, from my perspective, um, honestly, we haven't really even thought about this scenario. Um, I guess we expect this information to be in the description and if it's not in the description then it's kind of on the provider to kind of make it work right okay aside from that from like a how that would look yeah I just think anything that's slightly these all of these situations to me are kind of off piste Mm -hmm. Um, and they're all so nuanced it's really hard to categorize so this is when free text comes in useful and, and it's these sort of pieces of information that need to be um, included in any description. And I assume they would um, in the vast majority of them if they had such specific requirements and, and have so in, in, in the examples I've seen um, that are currently open and, and out on some of the finders we've, we've been looking at. Okay, so you, your recommendation would be just don't bother, don't bother with an additional property at all. Just yeah. Yeah, for this, because um, there's just it's really hard to standardize it from my perspective, because um, there's every different activity has got a different version of what is necessary to pass on a go um, in that in, in that instance. So I think it would be very complex, but I'm not the data experts that that you two are. Um, so, no, I, I think you're, uh, yeah, I think you're, I think you're right, Tom. I think I think the other thing to, to note here is actually that the types of activities we're talking about, which might require the prerequisites that we've kind of gone into detail on, we've not got any actual open data for those types yet, which is probably why this conversation hasn't. We're, we're kind of it's good we're preempting the, the, the challenges and, and what that might look like, but um, we're kind of slightly working ahead of the need, um, which you know, if we had rowing, for example, thinking about opening their data up then the learn to row session and how that links together would be a really obvious thing to do. And um, yeah, but, but at the moment, um, and all climbing. Yeah. Well, I think what it's doing is kind of keeping it clean a little bit because one of the problems with difficulty level is that age often gets mixed into that. Right. Um, 
And yeah, there, there was something else that often gets mixed into difficulty level along with prerequisites. It kind of goes into this jumble of like, eight yeah. who have also completed Mighty Ducks uh, hockey training can then participate in blah, 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 blah. So it's kind of, yeah. it, it's sort of part of my concern is that actually we do have some of this, it is jumbled together. So if we separate out a difficulty level, then we also need to have some way of describing this. Um, but I think actually you're spot on there in that we could, uh, uh, the fact we've separated them is probably the thing. And it sounds like what Tom's saying. Yeah, I mean, maybe we don't need to specify this at this point. We can just put the box on, you know, the, the issues there, pile in thoughts from the sports when we get to it. Um, but, but for now, we can say do level independently and not really, and, and anytime someone takes, says to us, yeah, but I want to put a prerequisite in level, we direct them to the GitHub issue and say, well, no, no, that's a different yeah. thing. We're solving it separately. That's why level's so simple and great and useful because we've, we've managed to drill down into really what level should be. So actually all we've done is really talk around all the reasons why this should be some, something separate to level, which is useful. Okay, that's a great note to conclude on. Um, yeah. Uh, well, thank you for your participation in the call. Is there any tremendously burning other business that needs to be raised uh, before we sign off? I think that all sounds good. I was just going to um, say I've been um, creating a presentation all morning um, and the Open Active website, um, since I last looked at it, has got a lot more things to steal and include in it. So well done for whoever <laughs> did that, for all the, all the new resources that seem to have sprouted on there. Oh, what resources in particular? Just out of interest. Uh, well, the learning stuff um, and a lot of the infographics I've never seen before. Um, so, like how it works. I'm effectively build, uh, making a presentation for this project we're doing with Staffordshire, which is a bit more of like an engagement project. Um, so, I've, I've stolen quite a lot and it's saved me quite a lot of time. So, I appreciate that. Great. Yeah, no worries. Um, it, it's kind of ironic because that, that's been live for a year and we're about to redo it all. Um, <laughs> it looks great. good. Great to hear. Yeah, okay. I must have seen it before, but I think the um, the community toolkit I hadn't, I hadn't uh, seen and got quite a lot of good stuff off there. Um, but I guess I've probably, surely it's not been a year. Well, anyway, so it's been a while since I've been on the website for that reason. So no, no, yeah, it's quite good. interesting stuff. Good feedback. Yeah, really good to know. I mean, I think the feedback we've been receiving recently is there's a lot of good stuff on the website. No one can find it because the website's quite hard to navigate. Was the feedback? Mm, got. Yeah, um, I, I think that could be right. But there is good stuff in there when I when I had a proper search around. It's <laughs> <laughs> good to hear. Okay, excellent. Awesome, guys. Um, I'm sure I'll chat to you in the near future. Yeah, I'm sure. Catch you later. All right. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. Thanks, guys. Bye bye.